Hi everybody, Mike with Enviroscape LA, and I'm having to talk a little bit louder today because there's a Pacific Ocean right in back of me. This is our latest project. It's a, a na mostly native garden and drought tolerant garden here in Manhattan Beach. And um, this lot used to look like this one here, um, and the homeowners wanted to do something with color and something more whimsical. So we came up with this. This has actually been, it's taken myself and the homeowners about three years of, to design this. But it, uh, there's a reason we wanted a native garden. The reason we wanted a native garden is because it attracts the pollinators and it attracts the, the good bugs that are good for the soil and good for the environment. I want to show you, I want to point out, this is actually a native plant here on the neighbor's corner, but check out that butterfly. That's one of those painted ladies. We're having that, uh, look at where they're all landing. They're landing on, on this native, it's like amazing. It's a miracle there, there's a, a migration going through. And check out the bee right here. So check that out. Little bee, amazing. Uh, it's wonderful and uh, the, these little painted lady butterflies you can google them um, read more about them uh, but they love the native plants and so that's what they go to so if you care about human society the best thing to take away from this video I want you to go out go to your local nursery buy a native plant and plant it because it's what brings the pollinators if the pollinators die they're gonna take us with them we don't want that we don't want that for the future we want to there is hope we can save this planet, but we're going to do it one plant at a time. It's by planting natives. Now, I want to explain to you that the number one food, the only food for the monarch butterfly is this plant right here. It's called milkweed, or the botanical name is Escapulus. Um, we've got some Artemisias. Um, we've got Salvias over here. We've got, um, the, the non-natives here are the, these guys right here. Uh, Jerusalem slant sage. It's Flomus fruticosa. Uh, but we like this because a homeowner realized that, you know, I gotta have some color right now. And it's got a beautiful work, beautiful yellow color. These are called lupines and they're brand new. We'll do another YouTube video follow up to this when they start blooming, but they gorgeous cone flowers. Um, and these are called uh, agave acapulis. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, and in the back we have the uh, coyote bush. So, just a fabulous, fabulous native landscape, and it's gonna, we just finished. Now, what's interesting is with every native garden you put in, what do natives like? They like, of course, they like, they love to be planted in soil, but this right here, this is called, it's a shredded bark. And after, you can see it, it's just watered in. After about a week, on the bottom of it, it develops something called mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza is a fungus, special fungus for plants. And what it does is it actually helps plants by connecting into the uh, tissue of the root of the plant. And then the mycorrhiza goes really deep, draws minerals, valuable minerals and nutrients out of the really deep uh, soil where the plants can't, don't have access to. They push it into the root and in return, because these plants are photosynthesizing, they're creating carbohydrates and sugars, they're giving a little shot of sugar back to the mycorrhiza. So it's, it's a network. I'll tell you, uh, if you, uh, you know, people will take credit today saying, I invented the internet, or somebody else will, will make the claim to it. You know who the original internet was? It's right here under the ground. These root systems have, uh, are the actual original internet. Now, uh, native plants do need water. It's, it's not that they're drought preferred, they're drought tolerant, they tolerate it, but they like water down there. Uh, because this is on a public uh, hillside, uh, the, it's called the Strand in Manhattan Beach, um, we decided against drip irrigation because dogs will go through here, people, surfers with their surfboards, so we didn't want anybody to trip and fall. So we installed uh, rainbird sprinklers and I uh, want to demonstrate to you what these sprinklers look like. Check this out. They're like spider webs. <laughs> so they, so I could leave these sprinklers on for 12 hours and check out that, check out that flow. I can leave them on for 12 hours and they won't 
cause but they won't have any they won't have any runoff they'll be the water soaks into the ground and so these these little stream rotors are just fabulous for uh, this type of application where you have a hillside if I put regular sprinklers here Within 10-15 minutes, the water would just erode down into the strand. That would not make anybody happy. You know, I'm so amazed because I hear birds, which you normally don't hear in the big cities, but I hear birds right now. But check, let's get another shot of these butterflies again. Check that out. This is the whole reason why we do it. The birds, the butterflies, the pollinators. Anyway, there is hope, and it's right here. This is Mike with Enviroscape LA signing off. When you think sustainability and regeneration and permaculture, think Enviroscape LA.